Hey guys, Sean McInnes back here on the stage show at Comic-Con 2010 down here in San Diego. I've got Tom Fult from the, from the Behemoth who's here to talk about Battle Block Theater, their new game, their new downloadable title coming to um, various downloadable platforms, right Tom? Uh, right now only confirmed for Xbox Live Arcade. Okay, right now. Okay. Um, so. Tell us about Battle Block Theater. You guys, your last game, Castle Crashers, was sort of a sort of a beat 'em up. But you guys are with Battle Block. You're sort of going back to your platforming roots, right? Yeah, Battle Block's a, a multiplayer platformer with both cooperative and competitive modes. Uh, if anyone's played PDA games in Alien Hominid, it's sort of a spiritual successor to that, but way more evolved. Yeah. So we've got you know the linear levels where you can collect gems and get to the end and compete amongst each other there. But we also have arena modes where you can do things such as uh, we have the gold grab with the whale, where you, the whale, golden whale drops the gold, and you collect it and have to get it to a flying safe, but the other players can try and kill you along the way and steal your gold. Uh, we got the one that's new here from last year is uh, King of the Hill, where we have spots that you get points for standing on. So you basically just compete to stand on the spots while other people are trying to knock you off and get the most points on there too. Now the game has um, online competitive elements in there. Uh, you know, this, this type of genre, this side-scrolling 2D, um, it, I guess you could call it a platform, but it's, there's a lot of combat in there as well. You don't really see a whole lot of those in the online competitive space. How did you guys get the idea to, uh, you it know? Really, it really just evolved over time. Uh, you know, we sort of realized that people liked griefing each other the yeah. most. So when they played the games, they always liked just sabotaging each other. You know, in PDA games, it was always, you know, pushing the boulder on someone's head or, you know, jumping in the boat when there's too much weight in the boat. So. The game's sort of just based on grief play and letting people really mess with each other. And the arena modes, you know, just give you more opportunity for that, more reward. So uh, we've actually got the game running right here. So Tom, talk to, talk to us about what we're seeing and what's going on. Okay, this is the King of the Hill mode right here. So it looks like uh, they got one-on-one -on -one going on. And those gold blocks right there, you get points for standing on them. So the goal right now is to knock the other guy off the blocks and uh, stay alive and spend the most time on the blocks collecting points. So you can see they got a, an uppercut move, which will send you up into the spikes. Uh, they also have their, their long range weapons. I think the one guy's got, yeah, they both got the Frisbees, which, you know, they'll kind of land and then detonate. Uh, there's other weapons, such as the grenade, which can detonate instantly, but other players can slide, tackle it back at you, so they can deflect your weapon into you and you can get yourself blown up. They also, oh, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, the characters that we're seeing on screen here, um, you, the players can actually, actually cu customize the look, right? Yeah, yeah there's, there's hundreds of characters, so you can collect them and play as whoever you like. Uh, you know, everyone has their favorite looks, so you can have a lot of fun with that. You can also customize which weapon you have, so there's a whole bunch of different weapons in the game. Uh, talk to us about how the control scheme works. I know you don't have a, you don't have a controller in your hand right now, yeah. but I'm sure you're intimately familiar with how yeah. it works. Uh, you have a you have a jump, and you can press it again in the air to do the double jump. Uh, your one button is basically like push moves. Uh, like if you're standing, you can shove a player. If you're running, you'll do a slide tackle, and if you're crouching, you'll do like a trip kick. And it's sort of like rock paper scissors, where every move cancels out another move. So depending on what one player is doing, if you beat him to the punch with the right move, you'll you'll be able to beat them. Uh, with your other button, you have your long range attacks, and when you're up close to someone, that becomes a punch, and if you're crouching, it becomes the uppercut. Uh, you also have your cooperative moves, which can be turned deadly. So if you hold the triggers, you can do things like you can pull someone off a ledge, but you can also throw someone if they run into you. So something you can do in some of these levels is, let's say there's a spike wall behind you. Yeah. If a player's running, you can just go into a throw, and you'll just toss them into the spike wall before he even knows what happened to him. So, you know, there's some really mischievous stuff you can do. And um, you mentioned spikes a second ago, but it looks like there's also some other hazards down there at the bottom. Yeah, there's the, the water pits or, or lava or poison, you know, whatever color it is at any given level. Uh, there's uh, also like laser beams that, you know, go on the timed lasers and fire at you. Uh, so lots of fun stuff there. All right, this mode here is the gold grab. So you'll see there's a golden whale flying around. They have a little arrow that points in the direction of the golden whale. So they're gonna go find him and he'll, he'll be dropping gold that they're collecting. And the, the amount of gold you have is represented by how much of the gold glow particles that fly off your character. So right now you can see this pink guy is getting all the gold. If I recall correctly, you have to go and deposit it, right? Yeah, the, right now his arrow is pointing towards the flying safe. So he can follow his arrow to find the safe and that's where he'll deposit his gold. So this mode has sort of a, a risk-reward element to yeah, it, right? Like, you could sort of like hang out by the whale, just 
hoard gold, stock up on it, but if you don't run over to that safe, so at some point you're going to lose all of yeah, it when you like, die. If another player kills you, you die, you'll spill your gold and they can take it. I've also had it happen where I've been hoarding lots of gold and then I just run out of time. Uh -huh. And that, that's when you really have regret for getting greedy. That, uh, so... I noticed I, I, I walked by your guys' booth, which isn't much of an accomplishment since you're right across the aisle. Uh -huh. And uh, a fan made the whale for you guys, right? Yeah, this fan made like a plush version of the whale. It's, it's like one of the coolest things at the booth, so everyone wants one now. We'll have to see what we can do about making them. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of like a gold fabric and everything, too. Nice. Now, um, once again, as with you know all your games, you've got uh, Dan Palette and your artist uh, creating the visual style of it. Um, uh, talk, talk to us about some of the characters that you encounter in this game. Obviously, the whale, I'm sure, uh, is going to be a, a lot of people's favorites. Uh, what other sorts of uh, people do you, do you one, have there? One thing that you're not really seeing in the in arena modes is the cats in the game. Uh -huh. Basically, this theater, you're, you're doing this for the amusement of cats, and there's also cats employed by the theater as like security guards and shopkeepers. So you'll have a lot of interactions with them throughout the game, and, and you'll see the story go with how they go. Uh, there's also the, the main, I guess, protagonist is... Uh, uh, is Hattie Haddington, who's this, he's the, he's the guy wearing the hat who can, as Dan puts it, experience two emotions at the same time. So he runs the theater and uh, likes emeralds. Very greedy. <laughs> yeah. Are we, uh, should we expect any uh, winks or nods to uh, previous games that the Behemoth has done? Yeah, I'd say we, we, we always enjoy doing that, so I'd say that's, that's likely. Yeah. <laughs> So, we'll see to what the extent it goes. So you guys have actually been um, showing this game for a while now. I remember back at Comic Con last year, we visited your studio, and back then it was still called The Behemoth Presents Game 3. Yeah. But it's come a long way since then, and in fact, I think it was playable at PAX last year. Yeah. So you guys have been getting a lot of fan feedback for quite a while now. Uh, has that affected the development in any way, like spending so much time with the public getting hands-on? Oh yeah, that affects all the games. Uh, we like to bring them to the conventions because we get a lot of feedback from everyone. And we can see, you know, how they're playing and, you know, where the game needs to be more clear. Uh, you know, one thing last year is like sometimes it took longer for people to figure out, you know, what the game is because there's so many different arena modes and you get confused. So that's become a lot more tight this year where they seem to walk up and they just get it now. You know, and they, they kind of figure out the modes easier. Uh, also, just the way they interact with each other, sort of like the rock, paper, scissors aspect of balancing out the different attacks. Uh, you know, we watch how people play and just keep on trying to, you know, fix the, the things that we see that seem like holes in that. Uh, so definitely, this is like our best testing is to come out to the conventions. And it looks like you guys have had a lot of fun just creating like these crazy different game modes. I imagine at some point the hardest part has to be like, you just have to stop putting in new uh, modes, stop thinking of new things yeah. to put in there, right? That's always the hard thing with us because we, we like to do it organically, so we have a lot of scope creep. Uh, so we do try to you know draw the line at some point and then just keep polishing everything that's there. But you know we always get ideas for new stuff, so it's always tough to tough to put the brakes on. <laughs> Are there, um, what sort of lessons have you guys learned from like your previous games, like uh, like Castle Crashers? Is there anything that you've uh, taken from that game and sort of like applied to this in terms of like, you know, what, what people like to see yeah. or like how to make, you know, how to really tune an online game? Yeah, I guess with Castle Crashers, you know, we, we learned, um, you know, a lot of families were playing it. Like a lot of people were playing it with their kids and their wives. And we got a lot of, you know, people coming to us saying, you know, it saved our family or, you know, I, I spent so much time with my kids playing this. So we want to kind of carry that forward and make sure we make games that, you know, they're, they're still crazy action games. You know, they're not casual games, but they're still something that, you know, you can play with your family and have a fun time with. Um, while still, you know, kind of being our, our, our take on that, you know, our own little unique take. All so. Right. so it uh, it looks like we've reached, uh, actually, was that the end of the, the demo that you yeah, guys Yeah, that was the you? end of the demo. All right, yeah. cool. Uh, Tom, I thanks very much for joining us on the stage here. I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, it's not much of a journey from, from the behemoth booth over there, but I appreciate you guys uh, dropping thanks, by. Man. Thanks for having me. Um, one last question for you. Do you guys uh, have any sort of uh, estimated release date for when Battleblock Theater yeah. is going to be done and available to download? Yeah, no set date. No set date? No. Yeah, <laughs> we're afraid of dates. <laughs> yeah. I, I can totally understand that. You guys need to put as much work as you can to yeah, yeah. polishing and finishing it up. So, um, so just, you know, stay tuned again. GameSpot.com, we will have the release date on there once these guys can, uh, we'll actually 
decide on that. So Tom, again, thank you very much. And let's go see what else is going on on the show floor.